What is going on YouTube? Fascinating graveyard. Today, we are at the Dayton Memorial Park Cemetery here in Dayton, Ohio. And today we're gonna to visit the grave of Agnes Moorhead. She is quite an accomplished actress uh, very famous in radio before television was a thing, but of course we all know and love her as playing Endora on television's Bewitched, which my sister used to make me watch as a child. I wasn't the biggest fan of that show, but I, I guess uh, I didn't get the humor. But then again, I was five or six. So we're going to talk a little bit about her career, and we're also going to talk about her unfortunate death, uh, almost, you could say, mysterious in some form or fashion. So let's get into it. So Agnes was born December 6, 1900, right? And she was born up in uh, Clinton, Massachusetts. And even as a little girl, uh, I guess her family could tell that she liked to play pretend. She would you know, pretend that she was uh, one of her mother's friends and she would mime and mimic them her and her sister would do that and then her mother would be like oh agnes who are you today and, and she would be like oh i'm your you know i'm your friend uh charlotte or whatever she would want to say she would pretend that she was charlotte sit down and they would play and drink pretend tea right and uh later on the family moved to massachusetts and they moved over to uh, New Concord, Ohio. And in Ohio, she went to school. She went to Muskegon College. I believe that's where she, uh, she majored in biology. And while she was in college, she did a little bit of acting. She did a couple plays here and there. And for some unknown reason, after, the, after that, her family moved up to Wisconsin and where she did some more plays like you know school plays what have you she went to u of dub uh, university of washington at madison and uh that is where she earned her degree uh in english she got a master's in it and later on she would do some postgraduate studies at the american academy of dramatic arts which she graduated with honors in 1929 now, after she was totally done with school, right? Because for a while, she was a professional student. You know, when you kind of go to school, you don't know what you really, really, really want to do. But you know what you want to do. But you know, no, you don't know what you really, really want to do. So you just kind of keep going to school. But she did teach school for about five years uh, after becoming a professional student. So she's on her own now, right? She's like, I really, really want to be an actress. I, I, you know, I, I know what I want to do. I want to be an actress, right? Right, okay. So for a while, uh, you know, back in those days, television wasn't really a thing. I mean, it was movies. Not many people, if any at all, had a television, but radio was a big thing. And she found out quickly that it was very, very difficult to become a actress and want to get into radio because guess what? A lot of other people want to do the same thing as well, right? But she had a, a couple... Uh, um, auditions, a lot of failure. Uh, she'd come back home, you know, not really getting a job. But uh, later on, she went back to radio and she started getting a couple bit parts. And then she started getting a little bit popular. And then she quickly found out that, wow, she's becoming a somewhat in demand actress over on the radio. And she got the uh, attention of one Orson Welles. Now, Orson Welles back in the days, uh, if you don't know who he is, he was an actor. He's really famous for that uh, that fake uh, radio broadcast of the aliens invading <laughs> the world. Uh, that guy. So he had a kind of like a troop of actors uh, under his belt. They were called uh, the Mercury Players. So it's basically, it was a group of actors and actresses, and they would put on uh, theatrical plays. Uh, they would do uh, radio shows. Uh, they would do motion pictures. Uh, sort of that nature. You had a couple of different actors uh, that worked with the Mercury Players. Uh, one, Paul Stewart. You had Mary Wicks. Now, I was reading a list of the actors that were involved, and I never heard of any of them. I'm not a big movie guy, but uh, one of those guys, Vincent Price, very, very famous actor. Uh, I believe I've seen at least one of his movies. Uh, he was very, very famous in the 40s and the 50s. 
here's a fun fact. Uh, I believe Agnes's big break on radio was playing Margot Lane on the radio broadcast, The Shadow. You know, The Shadow with uh, Lamont Cranston? You know, what The Shadow knows what lurks in the evil of men's hearts or something along those lines. I actually seen the movie The Shadow in theaters in the early 90s. Uh, the movie was terrible. Um, I, you know, but I was, I was enamored with the fact that the character's name was also Lamont. Uh, so she's also an accomplished uh, actress in terms of uh, winning awards. Uh, she won a Golden Globe uh, for Mrs. Parkinson. Uh, and she was also in a movie in 1942, The Big Street with Lucille Ball and Henry Fonda. And she did a, she did a couple other uh, radio shows and movies. And by that time in the mid 1940s, uh, Agnes was making very very good money. Uh, she was making six thousand dollars a week. And back in those days, when you were a uh, when you got a contract with a uh, motion picture company, uh, they didn't want you doing anything else except working for them. So she had a weird contract because she was allowed not only to make six thousand dollars a week, which is a lot of money. That's that's a lot of money now. But she was also allowed to continue to do radio work. And so, anyways, uh, one of her big movies that she was with was also with starring with Vincent Price was, I think it came out in 1959, The Bat. And she was also on an episode of The Twilight Zone. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about where, where we all really know her from. And that's, of course, Bewitched. So in 1964, uh, she got the, the role of playing Endora, you know, the mother of Samantha on Bewitched. And, you know, that is really what put her on the map. But you guys got to understand, she was very well known before that. I, would, I don't know if I would have called her a really big actress, but in radio, she was very well known. She had a... How do I describe it? She really didn't care for that character. Um, it, it was, uh, she just found it like, it may, maybe it, she thought it made her look like unprofessional, even though it, it made her wildly popular. And she was getting stopped in the street, like, oh, and asking for autographs and asking if I could take a picture with you. And I don't think she really liked that. She didn't like the fame that it brought her. I'm sure she liked the money, don't get me wrong. But the, the fame was, to her was just, it was a little bit, uh, I guess you could say bothersome. You know, when you got a bunch of people, you know, you consider yourself a serious actress and, you know, you're famous for being a television witch. Um, I guess she didn't really care for that. Uh, she would often say in uh, interviews that, you know, basically I'm a serious actress and you guys are like telling me, Oh, hey, uh, you know, you know, you got little kids in the street coming up to you like, oh, hey, do a magic trick because they think that you're a real life witch and you're not. You're an accomplished actress and you've been in the game for about 25, 30 years and people aren't, you know, saying, hey, I remember you from, uh, you know, such and such movie with Lucille Ball. No, they're saying, hey, I know you from Bewitched. And I, you know, I don't know why, you know, that's that's good money. So she didn't like that. So later on in, in the uh, later seasons of that uh, television show. She made a deal with the producers where she only had to do like eight of 12 episodes per uh, season or what have you. And uh, they let her do that. And so she would do other projects uh, while she was working, uh, playing Endora uh, in Bewitched. Now, uh, also in interviews uh one of the reasons why she didn't like that character was because she just felt it was like hackish she said like she couldn't stand the writers on that television show she just said they were just a bunch of hacks they didn't know how to write she didn't you know, maybe she didn't think it was funny she just thought the whole thing was silly and i don't think a lot of people realized that she just was not into that character at all whatsoever so i want to move away from that and i want to talk about her unfortunate death and it's something that you know, when I explain to you what happened, uh, very, very sad ending to her life. Uh, if some of you out there don't know, she died of cancer. I think at the time uh, she was filming a movie uh, with uh, Debbie Reynolds and Shelley Winters. Um, and she also uh, had her own, uh, I think she did like a low, uh, low budget movie 
called uh, Dear Dead Delilah. Delilah, excuse me. Oh, here's here's another thing before I get into her unfortunate death. If, in case you guys don't know, uh, she played the voice of the Good Goose on Charlotte's Web. The uh, I think it was an animated cartoon. But anyway, so let's talk about the cancer in which she died. So she died of uterine cancer on April 30th, 1974, and she had been battling the disease and it had been getting progressively worse. Well, a lot of people, including her, I believe, uh, felt that she got the disease because she was doing a movie with uh, John Wayne, right? And they were filming in St. George, Utah. And at that time, the government was testing out atomic weapons. So you had uh, this you know uh, a bunch of actors and actresses and they're doing uh they're doing this movie and there was about 220 people uh actors actresses uh, uh you know people behind the scenes extras and what have you and as we all know you know, the Duke, John Wayne, he died of cancer as well. I believe he died in 1979. But then again, he also did smoke a lot of cigarettes. But another actress that was in that movie, Susan Hayward, she died of cancer too. And here's a scary fact about uh, when they were filming uh, that movie, which title escapes me right now. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. But of the 220 people that were making that movie, Years later, 91 of them came down with cancer. And of those 91, 46 died. So you can't tell me that them getting cancer is not directly related to all that atomic testing. Because, you know, you get all that, you know, the uh, radioactive waves hitting the whole crew. And more than likely, that's exactly what happened. And she died at the age of 74. And it's very sad. Her mother had to bury her daughter. Her mother actually lived to be 106 uh, years old. And uh, this is the Memorial Abbey here on the grounds. If you want to come and visit her grave, you just kind of got to come all the way back into the cemetery. Their hours are 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So I'm just lucky that it stopped raining where I can... Uh, go inside and we can uh, visit uh, Miss Moorhead. So if you open the door, you come inside and you're gonna notice it's very warm in here if you're coming in here in the summer. You're gonna go up these steps, hang a left, and she is going to be on your left and you're immediately gonna see all of the flowers and the pictures on her uh, on her marker, and that is her. That is the late and great, late and great Agnes Robertson Moorhead. We got her picture right there, and uh, right there. And of course, uh, I believe that is her sister, right there. And these are the death dates, and then her father and her mother, right there. So. Yeah, just a, a great, fantastic career. She made, uh, you know, she was very famous. She made very good money. Uh, it's unfortunate that she didn't like the character from Bewitched because that's, of course, what made her very famous and made her legendary. And also a very sad way which she died, you know. And I don't think anybody really knew back in those days that how dangerous, uh, you know, that could have been with the testing of the nuclear weapons or what have you. So anyways, uh, rest in peace to Miss Moorhead. I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, as I enjoyed doing it. Uh, I just wanted to come and visit the lady that uh, my sister used to make me watch as a child, watching Bewitched. Okay, rest in peace to the Moorhead family. Okay, guys, I am out of here. I will catch up with you on the next vlog. Be good, y'all. Peace out.